Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Bhai Surgery Teach. So today we will be discussing the epidural anesthesia and analgesia. Okay, this is a very common technique uh, used for various procedures. Okay, it is a very common practice in field. This video actually doesn't belong to any playlist, uh, although you may have been interest in checking out different playlists. We have very different playlists for different category for students, for field veterinarians like that. Okay, from medicine also, from surgery also, though we have very less on gynecology. But this is particularly very important in case of gynecological cases. Okay, it may also have some uh, implications on the surgical point of view, but it is mainly for gynecological point of view. So now epidural anesthesia and analgesia. You see there is a word anesthesia and analgesia. Okay, they are actually different. Analgesia is basically a part of anesthesia. When we talk about anesthesia, especially the spinal anesthesia, we mostly deal with somatosensory system. Somatosensory system. Okay, in somatosensory system, you will find different receptors. There will be touch receptors, there will be pressure sensing receptors, there will be thermoreceptor or you can say heat sensing receptors and there will be pain receptor. Pain receptor is known as nociception. In anesthesia, all the reception will be gone. Whether it is pressure, whether it is uh, temperature, whether it is anything, uh, pain also. But in case of analgesia, only the pain receptors will be off. Okay, that is the basic difference between the anesthesia and analgesia. Analgesia is a very big or broad term and analgesia is part of anesthesia. If you want detail that what is anesthesia and analgesia, there is a video in the playlist anesthesiology. While well, uh, starting the anesthesiology, you will find this video. I think the video name was something introduction to pain or like that. Okay, I will uh, give the link in the description if you want a detailed study, then you can follow there. You see, these are some reference materials from which I have studied and I'm, I have collected the data and also made this PPT. Okay, so this is the Bible of the anesthesiology. In my opinion, this is a very good book, Lombard Jones Veterinary Anesthesia and Analysia. And this is a very good book if you want to be a large animal surgeon. This is the book for you, Ruminant Surgery. Here also you will find mention of epidural anesthesia. These are some articles where I have, you might have known that only lidocaine is used as for, used for the epidural anesthetics. But there are also other drugs and a combination of drugs which can be used as epidural anesthetic. And for that, I have gathered these articles. If you want, then you can download in the internet. They are free actually. These are some more articles through which I have gathered data and uh, I am presenting it to you. Okay. Let us go to our main presentation. So, which area will be desensitized if you are going for the epidural anesthesia? Mostly the tail, anus, vulva, perineum, caudal order in case of female, scrotum in case of male, upper hand limb, urethra in case of actually male. Okay, so basically you can say this much of region will be anesthetized. Okay, this is epidural anesthesia. One more thing you should remember, epidural anesthesia can be of two types. One is low dose or low volume epidural anesthesia. Another one is high dose, high dose, high volume. Okay, in this class or in this lecture, particularly we will be dealing with low dose, low volume. Okay, why I will discuss when I will be telling the anatomy, I will discuss how the high dose affects and how the low dose or low volume affects. Okay, usually whatever the epidural anesthesia we will be discussing is basically low dose, low volume epidural anesthesia. Some scientists or some surgeons believe, uh, tell that low dose, low volume as the caudal epidural anesthesia and some surgeons or uh, uh, the high dose to be the cranial. But there are some other surgeons also who prefer the lumbosacral to be the cranial epidural anesthesia while the sacrococcygeal or intercoccygeal we will see the site of depositions also to be caudal epidural anesthesia. Okay, so there are discrepancies regarding the cranial epidural and the caudal epidural. Different scientists have different 
theories and opinions use in this lecture just understand the concept okay understand the area understand the anatomical structure okay simply tell its epidural anesthesia okay you may not need to go into the debate of this cranial and cord anesthesia just understand the concept so this is the area which will be desensitized when you will be giving the epidural anesthesia so which in which procedures you will be needing this epidural anesthesia okay vaginal prolapse all type of prolapse whether it's vaginal or uterine prolapse anal prolapse okay in case of dystocia difficulty in the birth process dystocia tumor surgery sometimes you will find vulval tumors or some skin tumors around the perineal region those tumor surgeries vulval tear sometimes uh, animal which may go, go for the grazing they might have some injuries while the, through, through the barbed wire or fencing okay lacerated wound same urethral surgery if you are doing the urethra urethrotomy or urethrostomy whatever in case male animals and castration in case of males also you can use the epidural anesthesia for these procedures apart from that anything involving those particular areas tail anus perineum and the caudal order okay those areas for those you need epidural anesthesia let us understand some anatomy okay this picture was taken from the our favorite veterinary anatomy by arkegos okay so see here this is spinal cord usually this red one is spinal cord usually spinal cord aids at l6 this is l6 in case of large animals we are studying for large animals so in at l6 the spinal cord ends after that this red line is basically the extension of pyometer which is known as phylum terminale okay see this red one red covering is pyometer after this this is this is the green one this is the green one this green one is arachnoid between the pyometer and the arachnoid is there will be csf okay if you are giving injection to this it is intrathecal injection okay we are not doing there we are doing epidural so between this green and there is a purple line you see this is purple line okay or blue line whatever you males are usually not much of uh, they can't differentiate color like ladies <laughs> you may be purple or blue so this line is the dura mater pia mater arachnoid dura mater the space between the dura mater and the arachnoid is subdural space we will be depositing above the dura mater this space you see this blue color slightly bluish shade you see these regions this is epidural space okay we will be depositing here in the epidural space so you see this epidural space usually filled up with adipose tissue or fat tissue so i told you at l6 the vertebral column or you can say spinal cord actually the spinal cord ends after that at the end of sacrum nearly at the end of sacrum in some species you will find in the mid sacrum the dura mater also ends see here the purple line coming up to this your injection site will be here sacro coccygeal and after this this is first coccygeal this is second coccygeal in between this two the first and second the intercoccygeal or sacro coccygeal this is basically the epidural anesthesia okay so you see the dura mater has ended at the end of sacrum so when you are doing this uh, procedure when you will be depositing at the sacro coccygeal or at the intercoccygeal space actually there is isn't any dura mater so some surgeons they don't tell that this is the caudal epidural anesthesia or simply they will tell this is caudal anesthesia because there isn't any dura mater here so you are not depositing on the epidural space but the thing is where you will be depositing your local anesthetic whatever it may be usually they will migrate so when they will migrate to uh, many a times or you mean many literatures you will find they usually migrate up to the mid sacrum up to the mid sacrum when they will migrate they will automatically will be above the epidural membrane uh, space or uh, above the dura mater so you can tell this is epidural anesthesia okay
so it's all right some scientists have different views it's all right just understand the concept okay so you will be depositing here this is known as epidural epidural specially the caudal epidural caudal epidural okay and if you are doing lumbosacral you will be depositing here this is l6 this is sacrum in between these two this is lumbosacral in my opinion this is actually cranial this is cranial this is cranial epidural when you will be depositing at the lumbosacral joint and uh, this is caudal epidural when you will be depositing in sacrococcygeal joint or first intercoccygeal joint okay so this is basic anatomy you should know there are some discrepancies by different surgeons regarding the caudal block or it is caudal epidural block i told you just don't go into the controversies simply understand the concept okay now where you will be depositing or the technique through which you will be depositing you will be depositing actually here okay this picture is of lumbosacral actually i have taken this picture so that you can understand it better the concept how these techniques works there are two techniques the first technique is loss of resistance loss of resistance second is hanging drop technique hanging drop technique okay understand here same same principle applies here at the sacrococcygeal okay this is actually our time uh, topic you will be depositing here or you will be depositing here in between the first and second coccygeal vertebra but i am for this uh, actually the picture i didn't found for this one so i found for lumbosacral so understand the concept here so when you will be doing the puncture when you will be doing puncture before the puncture make sure to clip the hair clip the hair clipping and sterilize by alcohol or povidone iodide whatever sterilize the area okay because you don't need to put any infection on the skin into the vertebral column okay so be sure that you should have proper sterilization technique so when you will be inserting see this is skin this part is skin this is the spinous ligament and you can see the green one here this is ligamentum flabum okay ligamentum flabum so when you will be inserting the needle keep the bevel you see here the bevel is in cranial direction this is the bevel keep the bevel in the cranial direction and remember when after the lumbar and the sacrum here see the tail will be like this okay so if you are giving here you may need to put the needle in perpendicular direction but here you have to make slight angle the bevel will be towards cranial direction okay like this you have to enter like this okay so if you are doing here you may need to go for perpendicular but when you will be doing the sacrococcygeal and the intercoccygeal you may need to go slightly oblique in technical terms you will go the cranial cranio ventral okay the bevel will be cranio and will go ventral cranio ventral okay so understand here so when you will be putting needle through this skin then the spinous ligament then ligament flabum till here you will feel a resistance okay whenever you push a needle you will find some resistance when it is passes through skin or ligament just when you will puncture this ligamentum flabum when you will puncture this one after that it will, you will not feel, feel any kind of resistance okay that is known as loss of resistance loss of resistance it means you are in the epidural space okay this is the first after that you see here a turn hanging drop put one or two drop of lignocan or whatever local anesthetic you are using say or simply normal saline or best is normal saline put two drugs when you will put two drugs and the bevel is in the epidural space due to negative pressure it will get shocked up or you can say aspirated into the epidural space it means your needle is in epidural space remember this hanging drop technique is only 
be can be only be a diagnostic or you can say can be applied when the animal is in standing the animal is standing or sternal recubency or sternal recubency if the animal is in lateral recubency only the loss of resistance is your guiding to you cannot do the hanging drop okay you understood so by this you can know that the whether your needle is in epidural space or not and one thing the advantage of this sacrococcygeal nor uh, epidural or intercoccygeal epidural is here you don't find any spinal cord or even the dura mater so if you are at least uh, doing how first time or second time uh, you are newly doing this so if at least your needle goes through and through and hints a ventral pole floor you don't need to worry because there isn't any part of spinal cord though there will be some spinal nerves but you may not feel threatened or you may not feel any fear okay but it doesn't mean you should do every time you may injure some sacral nerves or coccygeal nerves okay so for you are all veterinarians okay veterinarians learn very very fast so if you may do for a mistake for first time but it should not be repeated okay so now you understood here i have told uh, i gave example of actually lumbosacral but the same principle is applied to this this is sacrum this is <coughs> first coccygeal this is second coccygeal you have to deposit the anesthetic here between the sacrum and co first coccygeal this is sacrococcygeal between the cocci 1 cocci 2 is intercoccygeal septic one is actually intercoccygeal in older animals uh, if the animal is very very old you may find the sacrum and first, first coccygeal to be fused okay so in that case you may not be able to give here so the safest and the easiest is between the coccygeal 1 and coccygeal 2 vertebrae one more thing how to identify actually this spot this is very very important how to identify what you do if the animal is standing simply move the tail up and down the sacrum is immobile okay so the fast moving joint fast moving joint will be the sacrococcygeal okay you understood if you will move this one this is the fast moving joint okay you can feel the sacrum you can feel the coccygeal vertebra in between these two you have to put the needle in cranio ventral like this okay cranio ventral if you will go perpendicular you may hit the coccygeal vertebrae and uh, you may not be able to get pass through so slightly tilt toward cranio ventral direction it will easily go okay so by this this uh, by moving the tail in pump handle handle pump you know tube well handle pump manner you will find the fast moving joint that is the sacrococcygeal in older animals it is uh, you may not find the sacrococcygeal it is intercoccygeal okay feel the two coccygeal vertebrae in between these two deposit the local anesthetics so this is the basic technique through which you can give the epidural anesthesia now let us go to the agents which anesthetic agents you can use the, you can use anesthetics or analgesics in anesthetics you can use lignocaine the dose rate is 0.11 mg per kg to 0.22 mg per kg body weight bupivacan ketamine you can also use ketamine okay and analgesics are xylazin you see xylazin medotavidin and romipidin they are alpha 2 agonist and in this case they are not purely analgesics, analgesics they have some sedative properties also but they are not also anesthetics you can use tramadol tramadol is similar to opioids not exactly opioid but similar to opioids dexamethasone is basically a steroid in case of dexamethasone you should use in adult animals not small caps and the total dose is actually 8 mg total maximum you can give 8 mg so here another thing the volume volume of local anesthetics you can use any of these so the volume ideally for an adult cow it should be 5 to 6 mg sometimes when you will go by dose rate it may not come up to 5 ml even see xylazine if the you are going for a higher bracket 0.05 mg per kg body weight and the cow is 400 kg body weight it comes to 20 mg okay 20 mg basically is 1 ml 
the drugs which are coming basically 20 mg per ml concentration so you have to you need 1 ml but you can't give 1 ml liquid value the basic is you should at least give minimum 5 ml so that it will have some cranial migration see here okay when you will be giving here if you are giving 1 ml it may not migrate cranially and do the job do the analysis here okay if the volume will be 5 ml then it will go up to the mid sacrum and do the needful which areas to be anesthetized okay and uh, here i forgot one concept i told you about low dose or you can say low volume and high volume high volume low volume means usually you will give 5 to 6 ml usually but you can go up to 8 ml also 10 ml i have used up to 8 ml i didn't found any problem in case of high volume it starts at nearly 20 uh, sorry 40 ml starts at 40 ml when you will be giving 40 ml here you will when you will be giving 40 ml it will go migrating it can go up to t13 okay and can go up to t13 that is high volume high volume epidural anesthesia low volume epidural anesthesia is basically 5 to 6 ml which is the purpose of this class okay 5 to 6 ml is enough for an adult cat. So, I told you about the dose rate. So, what will happen? This dialysin, I calculated, you need 1 ml. So, what to do? We have to give at least 5 ml. Okay. So, dilute with sterile water. Dilute with sterile water to make it 5 ml. Okay. Similarly, if you are doing <coughs> lignocaine also, if you are going for higher dose, 0.2 mg for a 400 kilo, you need 80 mg okay and it comes as 20 mg per ml concentration so you need 4 ml but you can dilute with the sterile water to make it 5 ml okay and also not only you can use them as single agent you can also combine you can combine ligonocaine with ketamine you can combine ligonocaine with xylazine you can combine with tramadol you can combine ligonocaine with the dexamethasone also we will see also how the onset of action of these combinations also their comparison we will also see. So while combining, if you are combining with lignocaine with usually the lignocaine is the primary anesthetics and you can combine this to increase the duration of anesthesia or you can say increase the duration of analgesia. So while when you are combining please take the lower doses rate. Okay, if you are combining with lignocaine and xylazine take lignocaine at 0.1 mg per kg body weight and xylazine at 0.03 mg per kg body weight. Usually, if you are combining lignocaine with xylazine, which is actually very famous protocol because it produces longest analgesia. Okay, first calculate the dose of xylazine, then adjust with the lignocaine. Okay. Now, let us compare different protocols. These are the data which I have taken from those articles. All of them are not found in the book. So, I have taken from the articles. If you are using only lignocaine, the onset of action is within 5 minutes or around 5 minutes. Remember, the onset of action does not mean the peak anesthesia. Okay. For peak anesthesia, most of the time you may need 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. After the administration. So, onset means the action has started, but for peak anesthesia, you have to wait. So, for lignocaine, it is onset is 5 minutes, duration is 1 to 2 hours. For ketamine, onset is within 5 minutes and the duration is very, very short actually, half an hour to 1 hour when used alone. If you are using xylazine, onset of action is slightly delayed, 10 minutes, but the duration is high, 3 to 4 hours. Tramadol, 15 minutes for our onset of action and it has very good duration of action, 5 hours. Best is lignocaine and xylazine. Onset of action is very, very fast, 5 minutes. And the duration is highest, 5 to 6 hours. You see, why you need this high duration of anesthesia? Sometimes people say, my surgery can go up to 1 hour or dystrophia may be completed within 2 hours. So, how, why I need this high amount or a uh, longer duration of analysis? You see, suppose you are doing a dystrophia operation. 
Uh, best example will be prolapse actually. Best example will be prolapse. Prolapse. Suppose there is uterine prolapse and you repositioned it, then after you did the suturing. Okay. Suturing. So when you will be doing this procedure, it is very very painful. So usually what happens if you are doing for two hours suppose you did the operation for two hours and you have used lignocaine and procedure is done and also anesthetic and analgesic effect is gone you see this is very very painful when you will be doing this suturing it is very very painful if you have a option through which you can provide at least a longer period of anesthesia especially the analgesia to the patient or to the uh, cattle or buffalo or calf whatever it is you can it is I found this is ethically correct also the morally correct okay you see and one more thing if you are depositing in sacrococcygeal space sacrococcygeal if you are depositing in sacrococcygeal space and with all these protocols whether ligonocan tramadol ligonocan dexamethasone or any of this you may find mild to moderate ataxia mild to moderate ataxia and it's all right okay the animal will not be lame okay the uh, hind limbs will be completely functioning but you may find some mild to moderate ataxia but it is all right don't fear this mild to moderate ataxia if you are doing everything right nothing will happen so in coccygeal if you are depositing coccygeal 1 between the coccygeal 1 and coccygeal 2 you may not find ataxia those articles which i have referred okay if you are depositing between the coccygeal 1 and coccygeal 2 the degree of ataxia is very very less than sacrococcygeal species why you know this cranial migration if i am depositing in sacrococcygeal space it may go beyond the mid sacrum if i am doing at the coccygeal 1 and 2 it may go to the mid sacrum Similarly, the ataxia level varies. And one more thing, when you will be using the alpha-2 agonist like xylazine, you may find some degree of sedation. Okay, so you know, don't need to worry. Okay, it is not that profound sedation which is basically caused by xylazine. When you will be using epidurally, the dose rate is very very low, 0.03 mg per kg body weight, and you may not find those uh, anything fatal. Okay you may find some degree of sedation which may be a good thing when the animal is in pain may be a good thing and one more thing uh, for uh, you can say your knowledge point of view though it is not available in field also this effect of xylazine when specially used in epidural anesthesia can be reversed or can be antagonized by tolazoline tolazoline okay, this is a drug you can give this IV to specially counteract the you see, xylazine is alpha 2 agonist, this is antagonist actually. Okay, so you can, uh, you, when you will give xylazine, it will simply, the tolazine will simply counteract on the sedation part, not the analgesia part. Okay, there will be very good analgesia, but the uh, tolazine will counteract the depression part, the sedation part. Okay, so this is for your information, you may not find this in market. If you are finding that very good, there is some article also you can follow. Okay, so this is basically all about the epidural anesthesia. And yes, you can also combine dexamethasone with lignocaine. While combining, dexamethasone is 8 mg. Okay, don't go beyond 8 mg. 8 mg usually 2 ml because 4 mg per uh, uh, ml concentration is coming. It's 2 ml. Okay, so man, don't go beyond 2 ml when using dexamethasone. There isn't much, much more articles regarding the use of steroids in epidural, only one article I found, okay. So this is basically all about the epidural anesthesia. So I thank you for the class listening to me. So we will meet in next class, till then tata bye bye, take care.